Now let's also talk about uh, a national marketplace for buying and selling of certain commodities. I'm talking about opening up opportunities for both buyers and producers to, you know, maximize their trade as well. And to help us, you know, understand more about this is Tuchi Ivoi, the deputy CEO of the Ghana Commodity Exchange. Hi, Tuchi. Hello there. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? Very well, thank you. Wonderful. I understand that the Ghana Commodity Exchange has been in existence for about a year. That's yes, right. Nice one. Uh, let's un better understand your fundamental purpose okay. and why exactly it was set up and what, what you're doing currently. Okay. Um, I think it was one of the key priorities of the government to help smallholder farmers in particular help oh. to have access to markets and then access to finance. I know this is a hot topic at the moment. Exactly. Um, if I can maybe explain the exchange operations. Okay. We have two fundamental operations. One is warehouse operations and then trading operations. So let's say that the core uh, business is the trading operations, but it goes hand in hand with warehousing. Um, I don't know how much um, detail I can go into. Should oh, yeah, I? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, do a bit more. we operate a network of warehouses across the country okay. um, in grain producing areas. So before we go into a, an area, we have to make sure there's grains there's there grain. and then we'll put a warehouse close by. We encourage farmers or sellers to bring their commodities to these warehouses. Okay. Here, we will grade them. So this is something which it's not new, um, but in practical terms, it's, it it's pretty new. Right. We're trying to standardize the market and standardize commodities. So you'll bring the commodities to the warehouse. Mm. We will look at the quality. We will check it. And before you leave, we'll actually grade these commodities. Yeah. So for example, a maize can have a grade one, two, three, or four. Okay. And this is talking about the level of quality, quality. that it carries. Um, you will be issued at that point with a warehouse receipt. It's okay. an electronic warehouse receipt, which will tell you how much volume you've brought in, um, what the quality of that grain is, um, and then we will store it for you. Okay, but how do you check the quality? Um, different ways. So it will depend on the commodity. It, it will depend on the grade that you bring in. Um, there are physical checks um, and then there are also some chemical checks. So it really okay. will depend on the commodity. Um, you can look at things like foreign matter. If you take a, a commodity like mm -hmm. maize, um, you look at broken kernels, the mm. percentage, things like that. So okay. every bag that comes in will be sampled and then, you know. So this is one of the, let's say, key benefits you'll get from this is that mm. you'll be able to realize a premium okay. price for a higher quality commodity commodity okay. and this is something that we think is very very important for our farmers to be able to benefit, benefit from. from you mentioned grains that you set up the warehouses right close to where the grains uh, actually are but how about other commodities as well or your fo main focus is on grains yeah, so when we started, we said, you know, we're going to start with a few commodities. We don't want to do everything at the same time okay. and, and get it wrong. Okay. Um, we have a very purposeful plan to build and scale up as we go along. Okay. We started with food security crops. The very okay. first commodity was maize in okay. uh, November 2018. And then earlier this year, we introduced soybean. And just a couple of months ago, sorghum and sesame. Okay. So the next step, the, the plan is to introduce cash crops such as cashew okay. um, and sometime okay. in the future coffee. And then in in the longer term we can look at other commodities like <laughs> gold well. yeah. okay okay i see i see what you're doing there uh, how about the trading opportunities you mentioned warehouse can we yeah. get a bit into trading okay. as well so once you've brought your commodity to the warehouse let's say it's ready to trade. Mm -hmm. um, I should say GCX is a membership-based organization, so you have to be a member to, to buy okay. or sell through the exchange. Um, and we are trying to bring buyers and sellers together. So as a buyer, you know that you can, you know, the exchange will help you find, you know, a commodity as a mm -hmm. seller will help you find a buyer. So the buyer is now ready to buy. Um, it is a fully electronic platform. So this okay. is something which is very new, very innovative, um, but we manage those things. We have a trading floor in Accra. Okay. Um, so a buyer would typically come to the Ghana Commodity Exchange head office, would log into the system. Mm -hmm. This is when the seller is ready to sell. So okay. first the seller will put his or her commodity up for sale. Okay. Say, okay, I have 10 tons of white maize. I'd like to sell it at this price. Mm. A buyer would come into the system, log in, he or she wants to buy 10 tons of white maize at this price. So it's like a system of negotiation, it's okay. all happening anonymously. It's like the stock exchange. It's like the stock exchange, yes. except instead of stocks, you're trading commodities. commodities. So when there's a match in the price, a transaction is affected. The system we're operating today is that if you sell your commodity today mm -hmm. within 24 hours, the exchange will um, deposit the funds into your bank account. So as a farmer, okay. you can be happy that within 24 hours you've received your 
payments. payments. That's the T plus one uh, system we're operating currently. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I, I, I understand that you also were looking at, you know, forwards and options, looking in uh, the, the figures, you know, the prices and all of that. Have you started with any of those? Yet? We haven't started. So futures options, they will come much later, much later. but hope, we're hoping to very uh, quickly introduce forwards okay. where you can agree on a price, on a, a forward price and delivery of the commodity. And that may come in a, in a few months. In a few months. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But so yeah. far, what have what have been your challenges? Okay, um, I'd say generally it's been really good. Um, mm -hmm. We have a lot of members now on the exchange, um, maybe about 150 members. Okay. But some of those members are representing a larger group of farmers. So you have different membership categories. You have a category which is called associate member, and this allows uh, farmers to be members directly. Okay. We also have trading members. They can trade for themselves only. Okay. And you have brokers who can trade for themselves or on behalf of others, others. Um, and clear. So some of these brokers are some of the traditional brokerages that you have, those who are trading on the stock exchange. Okay. But you also have a new class of brokers. These are farmer-based organizations or okay. aggregators. You could yeah. say the middlemen. There's also an opportunity for them. Okay. And together, they are representing close to 300,000 farmers today. Wow. Um, so, so the, you know, it's a growing um, organization. We're still in the early days. Mm. Um, I'd say... Those who are currently trading with us are really very happy with the service. Yeah. The buyers are getting quality product and the sellers are, you know, not only receiving um, their, their payments on time because mm -hmm. it's all contracted, uh, exactly. but they're also receiving better prices for higher quality. I think okay. that's the most important thing. It is thing. certainly important. Yeah. You are interested in exports as well. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have global, cons global customers that also trade with our local um, farmers and agencies and all of that? We have a uh, global interest, but okay. we decided that we'd start by developing the local market, okay. make sure the systems are working, make sure that, you know, we have this, um, let's say, supply chain, mm. you know, down pat. So you order your commodity, you get the quality, and then, you know, eventually we will be scaling up. To be honest, we, we have a lot of interest. For example, cashew. Okay, We've yeah. we started receiving calls from Vietnam asking if okay. they can buy cashew from Ghana through the Ghana Commodity Exchange. Okay. So we're working to accelerate some of these, um, you know, the implementation of some of these um, areas. Okay. Yeah. Because I know worldwide, uh, commodity like oil palm is actually doing very well, especially in the, biz uh, the beauty business. A lot of people are cashing in on that. And so their countries are making money out of, you know, the oil palm business. Let's talk a bit more about uh, the other challenges that you face as well crossing over going ac across the country are you f um, focusing mainly on the agents or you're looking at the farmers themselves to, to be able to educate them to be able to make their own money mm. their own benefits because again if they pass through the agents if they pass through you know the other organizations that help them get this the, the agencies will also get a portion of the funds so are you going directly to the farmers as well yeah i mean you've hit on one of the key challenges first of all even trying to create awareness and mm. what this exchange is what it means what it does mm. it's very technical um, and if you're not in it it's very difficult to understand so trying to educate the general public and you know the millions of farmers we have is a very very difficult task mm. it costs a lot because you have to go and do a lot of outreach activities and you can't go once um, you have to go again and again yeah. and explain you know how the system works um, I think earlier on the program I heard somebody talking about post harvest loss management Indeed, it's a reality yeah. um, we take an example of maize again. I'm using maize because it was the first commodity we, we launched. Um, but, you know, estimated um, post-harvest losses around 40%. A lot of that is due to poor storage conditions. Right. So you've harvested your commodity. Yeah. It's good today. You have nowhere good to store it. The conditions aren't right. Mm. And you can literally lose, you know, close all to 30%, all of that volume just from uh, poor, poor storage, storage management. So obviously that's one of the areas we intervene in. We only exactly. intervene the from post-harvest. Okay. So yes, this education trying to, um, you know, get people to be self-sufficient, it is very difficult and it's going to take a long time. But mm. I think what's encouraging is that we've demonstrated that it works. Okay. Um, if only we can help to bring more people through the system, I, I think that will be a, a good thing. Um, yeah. And since that's, uh, you're, we're talking about warehousing uh, challenges as well, there are some, some associations, uh, grains, tubers and so, that have complained about 
warehouses and all of that, do you also work with these associations to get them on board so that they yes. have better business operations? Yeah, we, we try to work with as many associations as possible because it's difficult to reach, you know, individually, um, you know, millions of, of mm. smallholder farmers. So often we'll work with organizations, farmer-based organizations, Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana, Ghana Rice Interprofessional Body, lots mm. and lots of associations. We try to work with them so that they can also help to to, to pass the information down. Um, and that's one of our, our, our core priorities, <laughs> yes. And, and you partner with the government of Ghana as well. How do they come in? How do they okay. help you? Okay. So the exchange was actually um, set up to be a public-private partnership. Okay. So currently um, it's fully funded by the government of Ghana and it was a strategic decision. They said, you know, once you start to bring on investors, they're going to be looking at the bottom line from day one. Okay. What the Ghana Commodity Exchange seeks to do is to really help improve the livelihoods of smallholder farmers mm -hmm. and traders. Uh, you know, and that's a, that, that's a core priority. So the government said, let's fund it to begin with. Let's make sure the priorities of our farmers are, are, are are realized mm -hmm. and then later on we can bring on board other investors. So you will find that today um, we have regular visits from developmental partners, um, IFC, we're working closely with World Food Program, IFAD, so many of them because the priorities are the same mm -hmm. um, and it means that we're able to spend a little bit more time to make sure that we get the fundamentals right you know, build a, a market um, for our farmers mm. and then eventually, I mean, they'll be making more profits and then you can look at expanding um, and going into scale. So this is, you know, a core intervention of the government. Oh, you have programs such as Planting for Food and Jobs. Exactly. Um, and we've heard a lot about bumper harvests. We yeah. know that the idea is to increase production, but not just production, quality production. Exactly. But now there's going to be more products. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that we can help them have access to markets and not exactly. only locally, but internationally. Exactly. So this program, the exchange feeds into the planting for food and jobs. Oh. And if you look at another area like One District, One Warehouse, yes. um, you're looking at quality storage so that you don't lose as much product after exactly. you've harvested. Um, and we're working with the Ministry of Food and Agriculture and Special Development Initiatives to also okay. make sure that we you know, store the commodities in the right place. It, it's really a whole ecosystem. Mm. Um, and eventually, I, I think we're all going to start to see the benefits. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of benefits, have you seen anything directly from some of the farmers and others who are on board as well? Yeah, OK, so I'm actually quite excited to to say that very recently we launched what we call the warehouse receipt financing program. Warehouse receipt financing, financing program. program. Okay. So this um, issue about you know access to to finance farmers or you know agribusinesses uh, having difficulty accessing loans yes, yes, um, because yes. of the high risk factor. So banks mm -hmm. are not wanting to lend. What the exchange does is because we don't buy and we don't sell. What we do do is we facilitate, but we guarantee the quality of the commodities that come through our warehouse, okay. and we guarantee the market. So there's a guarantee of payment at the end of the day. Okay. So the banks are getting more comfortable to lend to the agricultural sector through this medium. Um, very recently, the first bank that we work with, we're working with 12 banks. Okay. Um, ARB Apex was the first to actually issue a loan okay. to a smallholder farmer using his commodity as sole collateral. So he didn't need to bring anything else, just his commodity, commodity, which is stored in our warehouse. So okay. we're guaranteeing then the okay. commodity, the quantity, the quality. Yeah. The bank gives um, him the loan. Three months, it's a short-term loan. Exactly. Once he sells his commodity a few months later, when the prices are better, he can pay back the loan, exactly. but still make a higher um, margin than if he'd sold it straight away. So this is really, a, let's say it's a breakthrough in mm. terms of agricultural financing. Um, and we're looking to see more and more oh, of that. So we have other banks there. on board. Oh, you do? Yes, you yes, yes. Banks. Yes, that's, we, we're that's working, you know. yeah, we have partnerships with um, Fidelity, mm. with Barclays Bank, GCB, okay. Exim Bank. So I, I believe that slowly this is going to be rolled out and it will be a very positive thing for farmers, for traders and okay. for Ghana. All right, yeah. that's good to know. Uh, finally, because we, we've actually run out of time, okay. uh, any last words for the people out there? What should we expect from you next? How do we, you know, come on board if we think that we would like to be a part of this as well? Okay, I'd say, I mean, today's Farmers' Day, so we're celebrating farmers. Um, we're also celebrating agribusiness in mm. general. And if you look at the types of jobs that are being created through this ecosystem, so within the commodity exchange itself, you have new types of roles like trading, broking, mm. Um, so many things, research analysts, 
But in the outer ecosystem, you have things like transportation, haulage, warehouse operations, mm. telecommunications, because at the end of every day, we send price um, information to our members. They know exactly how much the commodities are going for yeah. by grade, not just a general price. Um, so all of these things are, are areas that people can go into. So yeah. if you think agribusiness is not attractive, yeah. actually there's technology, Indeed. there's communication. Indeed. There are so many diverse roles, and I'd encourage people to, to look into it more to understand. Last words are that our doors are always open. Okay. We'd like people to come and visit us at the exchange. We'll share more and tell you how you can uh, also benefit. So, right. It looks it. like it certainly looks like a light for anyone who's interested in agribusiness. And so, uh, Tucci Ivoi, the deputy CEO of the Ghana Commodity Exchange, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you so much yes, for inviting us. I hope us. that uh, the youth and others who are interested in farming would take advantage of it as well.